This episode of Phone Buff is brought to you by lynda.com. Go to lynda.com slash phone buff to start your free seven day trial today. What's up guys, David here from Phone Buff and it's an exciting time of year in the world of technology with Apple announcing iOS 8 a few weeks back and Google I.O. just right around the corner. So I figured it was a good time to do a Q&A and based off all the good questions you guys have been asking me on Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus, it looks like I was right. So let's go ahead and get to answering some questions. Why do iPhone users hate Android? I don't know, but I think you can ask the same question in reverse and why do Android users hate the iPhone? Honestly, when I see someone being clearly biased against any OS, I usually chalk it up to two things. One, either that person hasn't owned a device running the OS that they're bashing and or just bashing it to sort of justify their own purchasing decision, or two, they're just really, really passionate about the OS they like and don't see why others wouldn't feel the same way. Either way, I don't think it makes any sense to be closed-minded to any OS as every OS and even every device for that matter has its own set of unique advantages and by closing yourself off to any of them, you may be missing an opportunity to at least try something that you may end up liking better. What's your view on iOS now being more open like Android with third-party keyboards? So as I was watching the WWDC live stream a few weeks ago, I found myself getting more and more excited with every new feature Apple announced for iOS 8. Now, some of these features did remind me an awful lot of the features currently found on Android, but nonetheless, there were features that I think most of us have been waiting for for a really long time. As far as Apple opening up iOS 8, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's still not anywhere near the same level of openness as you'd get on Android, but opening up iOS even just a little ultimately puts more power into the hands of developers, which should not only result in better apps, but also a better overall user experience. Third party keyboards, like you mentioned, will definitely be a plus as you'll no longer have to be stuck with just iOS's stock keyboard. But because I personally already like iOS's keyboard, I'm actually more excited about the new sharing options, the custom actions, the widgets in the notification center, along with the ability for developers to use Touch ID in their apps instead of requiring a lengthy password. In a nutshell, I think with iOS 8, Apple is starting to finally do what a lot of Android users have been wanting Apple to do since they left iOS for Android. And with the rumors of the bigger screened iPhone just around the corner, I think the iPhone 6 combined with iOS 8 may just sway some of those Android converts right back to Apple, or at the very least, make a lot of them reconsider it. What do you expect to see in the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, and do you think it will compete for the best smartphone in 2014? Well, while we still don't have any official information on the Galaxy Note 4, based off of the early rumors that we've heard so far and the history of the Galaxy Note line in general, I'd expect the Note 4 to pack pretty much nothing but the top of the line specs when it gets released. I've been saying this since back with the Note 2 and I'll say it here again, the Galaxy Note is Samsung's high-end smartphone and with that means it'll pack mostly high-end specs. So I expect things like a QHD display, a top of the line processor like a Snapdragon 805 or one of Samsung's own octa-core chips, three or maybe even four gigabytes of RAM depending on how far Samsung wants to push the spec sheet, IP67 water and dust resistance and a fingerprint scanner like we saw in the Galaxy S5, and of course, what makes the Galaxy Note the Galaxy Note, an improved version of the S Pen. So in other words, yes, I think the Note 4 will definitely compete as one of the best smartphones in 2014, at least when it comes to specs. And if Samsung could put a more streamlined version of TouchWiz on it and maybe even give it a better build quality, then it'll have a real shot at being one of the best, if not the best smartphone in 2014. Do you think all the new features with iOS 8, especially Hey Siri, will affect the current iPhone's batteries drastically? The jury is still out on how these features will affect battery life with iOS 8 still being in beta, but I don't think Apple would sacrifice battery life too much in order to bring these features to existing iPhones. In fact, that Hey Siri feature you were talking about is being limited to work only when current iPhones are plugged into a charger, so that particular feature won't affect battery life at all. But I imagine that one of the selling points for the iPhone 6 will probably be using Hey Siri without it negatively affecting battery life, much like you can use the OK Google Now feature on the Moto X. What do you think about the future of the Nexus line, or should I say Android Silver? Are they going in the right direction? Well, first off, we don't know for sure if these rumors are true until we get official word from Google, but for those of you who haven't heard, the rumors going around right now are that Google plans on killing off the Nexus line, so there will either be no Nexus 6 or the Nexus 6 will be the last Nexus, and going forward, Google's gonna replace the Nexus line with what is currently being dubbed as Android Silver. Now, 
When you first hear that, it sounds like a really bad thing, right? I mean, just like many of you, I've grown to love the Nexus sign over the years for both its stock Android experience and amazing price points. So seeing it get canceled wouldn't really make me all that happy, but what does give me a little bit of hope are what the rumors are saying Android Silver will be. Basically, Android Silver will be a lot like the Nexus program, but it'll be different in that it'll feature multiple devices from different manufacturers, and Google won't be working directly with these manufacturers to make the devices, and instead, will give them a set of guidelines that they need to follow in order to have their devices sold and marketed under the Android Silver brand name. This way, Google will still be able to control the direction in which Android heads, much like they do with the Nexus devices, while also getting a wider range of devices out there and actually into the hands of consumers that should not only result in more people getting a better Android experience, but also Google taking back some of that control over Android that they've lost to companies like Samsung. But enough about the Android Silver program itself. What about the actual Android Silver devices? Will they look like your typical Nexus or will it more closely resemble the Play editions? Honestly, I think it's gonna fall somewhere in between those two. In fact, what I imagine an Android Silver phone to look like is a lot like the Moto X. I mean, think about it for a second. The Moto X is running a near stock version of Android and was built with that version of Android in mind. It gets updated to the latest version of Android a lot faster than most other non-Nexus devices. It doesn't have a bunch of manufacturer bloatware and maybe most importantly, it was made when Google happened to own Motorola. So. Maybe the Moto X was a small preview of what's to come with Android Silver, and if that's the case and these rumors don't end up being false, then I definitely think that Google is going in the right direction. But what do you guys think? Do you think Android Silver will help Android get to the next level, or do you think that ditching the Nexus line is just a bad idea? Let me know down below in the comments. Okay, so before I head out, I want to give a huge shout out to lynda.com for making this video possible. Lynda.com helps you learn and keep up to date with your software, pick up brand new skills, or explore new hobbies with their easy to follow video tutorials. If you're a fan of the channel and you're watching this video, I'd say that there's a pretty good chance that you're into technology and with lynda.com, you can learn how to get the most out of it. Whether you wanna take better pictures and video with your DSLR, learn the programming skills you need to develop your own mobile app, or edit your own video footage using Final Cut or Premiere like I do, lynda.com offers thousands of video courses in a variety of topics with more being added weekly. Plans start at just $25 a month and for you phone buffs, lynda.com is giving you guys a free seven day trial. So head over to lynda.com slash phone buff, start your free seven day trial, learn that skill that you've always wanted to learn and help support the channel in the process. All right, guys, that's it for me in this episode of Phone Buff Q&As. If you liked it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button to show your love. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more mobile technology videos from me, just like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the very next episode.